What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Buster Bookie Show. Today is Thursday, April 11th. Quick recap, I still got the Nuggets game going on right now, so I don't know how we officially finished up for the day. We are 2-1 and one going into this game, so we will either be 3-1 and one or 2-2. Two and two. Not a bad day either way. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Bust Your Bookie Show. What we like to do is try to give out 40 bucks. If you'd like to qualify, all you need to do, number one, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button right now. Number two, comment below, 4-0. Give us the good vibes. And number three, like the video. If you do all that and we sweep going 4-0, I will cash up somebody at random. I'll send you 40 bucks. We've had some solid days in the NBA. We went 4-0 two days ago, and we were either 3-1 or 2-2 two two in yesterday's plays. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into today's plays. The first one we're looking at is going to be New Orleans at Sacramento. Sacramento favored by one in this game. On the year, New Orleans 47 and 32. They are 28 and 21 in conference. On the road, a very solid 26 and 14. For Sacramento, 45 and 34. They've had a little bit of a disappointing season after such a great year last year, but they're still solid 29 and 20 in conference. At home, this team is 23 and 15. Most recently for New Orleans, they were on the road against Portland, beat them by 10. They also beat Phoenix by 8 for that so they've been pretty solid on the road for sacramento they were on the road against oklahoma city lost to them by seven the big injuries for new orleans i mention this all the time but brandon ingram being out is a problem for this team he's got a knee issue and then naji marshall is listed as questionable for sacramento they have keegan murray and jordan ford listed as questionable malik monk and kevin herter are out so who's going to do the bulk of scoring for New Orleans? C.J. McCollum averaging almost 20 a game. Uh, Zion Williamson having a very solid year, 22.8 points per game. Those are the guys are going to do the bulk of the scoring. Valanciunas as well averages 12.3, almost nine rebounds. For this Kings team, they're led by Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox. Fox, 26 points per game. Sabonis, he's a double-double machine, 19.3 points. 13 rebounds and eight assists. Versatile player, not a big fan of his defense. Looking at some ATS trends, New Orleans 42, 36, and one on the season. They are one and four in their last five. However, on the road, 22, 17, and one for Sacramento, 40, 38, and one against the spread, three and two in their last five. At home, 16 and 22. So that's kind of a problem when you look at what. Sacramento has been kind of doing at home compared to New Orleans on the road. And that is going to lead into our play. We are going to go ahead and take New Orleans here plus one. Looking at some key stats over the last three games, uh, New Orleans averaging 110 per game. That's down compared to their average. However, the bigger concern is Sacramento's offense. 116 on the year, but over their last three, only scoring 104. And I mentioned New Orleans is solid on the road, especially as far as covering. On average, this team wins by 5.2 on the road. Sacramento only wins by 1.8 at home. And I mentioned Sabonis' defense. I'm a huge Kings fan. I'm from California. But watching him defend in the paint, I say it all the time for Sacramento. They need a shot blocker, and they don't have it. Sabonis so at center cannot block shots. He's not a rim protector. And New Orleans is averaging 49.3 points in the paint over the last three. On the season, they average almost 52. So Zion Williamson, I think, is going to completely eat up Sabonis and anybody else inside in this game, as well as Valanciunas. Over the last three games, also overall shooting numbers, New Orleans has been better from free throw, three-point line, and two-point and effective field goal percentage. So we're going to take the points here. Give us New Orleans plus one in basically a pick -em situation. I think Zion eats inside. All right, moving on to our second play now. We're looking at New York at Boston. New York, 47 and 32 on the season, six and four in their last 10 on the road, 23 and 18. For this Boston Celtics team, 62 and 17 on the year. 39 and 10 on, in conference, 7 and 3 in their last 10. At home, a dominating 35 and 3. For New York, they've won their last two road games, beating Chicago and Milwaukee. Boston, 
They lost on the road to Milwaukee. We were on the correct side of that one. But before that, they had won, looks like, one, two, three, four, five games in a row. So let's not be too spooked by their most recent loss. However, injuries could play a part in this one. For New York, listed as out, the big name, Julius Randle, going to miss the rest of the season due to right shoulder surgery. That's a problem for this team. For Boston, they've got – a ton of guys listed as questionable, and most of their main guys, actually. Xavier Tillman, Christoph Przingis, Brown, Holiday, Tatum, Horford, all listed as questionable. And I think that's why this line is so close. However, we are going to go ahead and take Boston. Looking at the top players for New York, you know, Jalen Brunson's having a great year. Um, Dante DiVincenzo's averaging 15, Brunson at 28 a game. Those guys are really you know, powerful and can really score for those guys. For Boston, it's hard to say who's going to play, but we know Holiday, uh, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Porzingis, those are obviously the main guys if they're playing. The problem is going to be if they're not playing, who else can score? Peyton Pritchard, 8.8. Uh, you know, I do have some concerns. Derek White's averaging 15.3. Um, so I'm just hoping at least two of those guys that are listed as questionable do play to give them the scoring that they need. Looking at some point spread analysis here, New York 42, 34 and three against the spread this year, seven and three in their last 10 on the road, 21, 18 and two for Boston, 40, 35 and four. They are four, five and one in their last 10 at home, 21, 16 and one. The big reason that we are taking Boston here is because they are at home. Uh, this team is very, very good at home. On average, they win by 15 and a half points at home. New York is a good team. On average, they win by 3.1 on the road. Um, Boston's also been solid defensively. On the year, they give up 109 over the last three, only giving up 103.7. So keep that in mind. While New York is shooting it better from the three-point line lately, Boston has done a lot better job shooting it from the two-point line. I like Boston here at home. Uh, it's kind of a nice, you know, pick-me-up spot after losing to Milwaukee recently. And, again, those, those guys are listed as questionable. Keep an eye on them. But as long as two of their, uh, you know, five main guys are playing, I like them here to cover at home. So give us Boston minus one and a half as our second play. Quick reminder before we get into our third play, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, BetUS. Your first three deposits, they will match you 125%. BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. All right, moving on to our third play now. We're looking at Houston at Utah. Houston favored by four in this game. On the season, Houston 39 and 40, 5 and 5 in their last 10 on the road, 12 and 26. For this Utah team, this team is very sad. I mean, let's just say what it is. This team is depressing to watch. 29 and 50 on the year, but this team has lost 13 games in a row. Just sickening to watch, to hear about, to read about. This team does not have much going on for them. Let's just say what it is, guys. Most recently, Houston was at home against Orlando, beat them by 12. And do we really have to wonder if Utah won? No, they did not. Lost by 16 at home to Denver. I can go on and on about how many games in a row they've lost, but you guys get my point. Looking at the injury report for Houston, out is Jay Sean Tate, Singoon, Tari Eason, and Steven Adams. For Utah, out, Walker Kessler, Sexton, Chris Dunn, John Collins, Jordan Clarkson, and Lori Markinen. The most recent ones there are Chris Dunn, Sexton, and Kessler. Markinen's been out for a while, and Jordan Clarkson's been out, it looks like, since April 6th. So who do these teams have that can still score? Uh, Houston's got the better players, in my opinion, for sure. Fred Van Vliet, averaging 17-8. and eight. Jalen Green, we know how explosive he is, averaging almost 20 a game. Dylan Brooks gives you 12 and some nasty defense. That's worth something. For this Utah team, they got so many guys that are out, it's hard to tell who's going to be able to step up here. Taylor Horton Tucker, averaging 9.9. .9. Kelly Olenek, 
8.1. This team does not have many scoring options. That's why this team sucks. Let's say it, all right? I think you guys know where I'm going with this one. We are going to take Houston here, minus four. Looking at some ATS trends, Houston 43, 34, and two on the year, five and five in their last 10. On the road, 16, 21, and one. Not great, but Utah 38, 40, and one ATS wise, one and four against the spread in their last five, two and eight in their last 10. So Utah is not only losing, they are failing to cover in a ton of games as well. I don't like the way this team's playing. If you also look just how much they've been losing by, I mean, Houston only needs to win by four. Looking at some recent games that Utah has played, lost by 16, eight to Golden State. Okay, that's respectable. 29 to the Clippers, 16 to Cleveland, 21 to Houston, one to Houston, seven to San Antonio, but then back to double digit losses again, 10 to Dallas, 28 to Houston again, 16 to Dallas, 12 to Oakland. So many double digit losses. I feel great about Houston here, minus four as our third play of the day. All right, moving on to our fourth and final play now. We're looking at Golden State at Portland. Golden State favored by 15 points here. On the year, Golden State 44 and 35. They're 8 and 2 in their last 10 on the road, 24 and 16. For Portland, 21 and 58, 8 and 41 in conference, 2 and 8 in their last 10. At home, only 11 and 28. Most recently, Golden State was on the road against the Lakers. They put on a shooting clinic. I mean, Draymond Green hit like five or six threes. They beat them by 14. For Portland, as I mentioned, they've been struggling. They lost at home to New Orleans by 10. Before that, they lost on the road to Boston by 17. The big injury potential here for Golden State is that Draymond is listed as questionable with a knee problem, knee contusion. All right. Dario Saric is also listed as out. For Portland, they, you know, part of their problem for such a terrible season is their injuries. Guys that are out, Shaden Sharp, Matisse Thibel, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Grant, Brogdon, uh, Tumani Kamara, Simons, and Robert Williams all are out. And Ibu Baji, I don't even know who he is, I'll be honest with you guys, he's listed as questionable. For Golden State, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, they're still there. Andrew Wiggins is having a decent year. Uh, Kuminga having a real solid year. And I like the lefty, Brandon Prozimski. I think he's a sleeper player that's going to be playing a lot for this team in future years. The question is for Portland, who is going to step up with all these injuries? You've got DeAndre Ayton averaging a double-double, 16 and 11. After that, it's hard to find guys. Delano Banton. 16 points a game, he's solid. I do like Scoot Henderson. I think the more minutes he plays, he's going to be a better player overall in the long run. With that being said, give us Portland. Might not be the direction you guys thought I was going. Going to throw you a little curveball here. We're going to take the points, though. Give us Portland plus 15. Looking at some ATS trends, Golden State 43, 35, and 1. They are 6-4 and four in their last 10. Meanwhile, Portland, 38, 39, and 2 on the season. However, their last five against the spread, 4, 0, oh, and 1. 6, 3, and 1 in their last 10. So they've been playing decent against the spread, including covering their last three games that have been at home. They've covered all three of them. They covered by 6.5, 7.5, and by four points. Even though they were all losses, I'll admit, they have been covering. So, you know, you just look at also what they've kind of done uh, most recently, just straight up, um, you know, they lost by 10 to New Orleans, 17 by Boston. But before that, they beat Washington by six. They beat Charlotte by three, only lost by one to Orlando. So we're getting 15 points here. Uh, and that is why we're going to go ahead and take Portland here. I think it's a decent little letdown spot for Golden State after their kind of big emotional win on the road. you got Draymond Green, who's listed as questionable. I don't see why you don't just sit him out anyways here. So we're going to take the points. Give us Portland plus 15 as our fourth and final play of the day. That's going to wrap it up for us today. As I mentioned at the beginning, if you'd like to qualify for the 40 bucks, number one, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Number two, comment below 4 and 0. Oh, give us the good vibes. Number three, like the video. And if you do that and we sweep, I'll select somebody at random. I'll cash up you 40 bucks. Did it two days ago. I hope to do it again today.
Our motto on this channel is to bust your bookie. We're off to a very solid start once we've started to do NBA. Let's keep it going. Let's get the sweep today.